Good afternoon and welcome to Investor Schooling Live, coming to you from Investor Schooling Headquarters. I'm Phil Falcone, here with my business partner, Larry Steinhouse, not to be confused as my partner. <laughs> we are founders of Investor Schooling. Get ready to learn real estate and stock option investing. Call us with your questions now at 855-939-1137. That's right, 855-939-1137. We don't care what we're talking about. We love to take calls from our listeners. So if you pick up the phone and call us, we will answer and we will talk to you no matter what we're talking about, all right? So we're a live program. Obviously, if you can call us. And we're doing it out of Investor Schooling Headquarters in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, serving the Philadelphia area in a real brick-and-mortar building. I say that because we don't fly into a hotel, take your money, and fly out the door. That's not what we do. We're local guys, accessible to, our, accessible to our students, a minimum of two nights per week. You want to learn this business, the real estate investing business, the stock option investing business, from people who live it every day. Hey, Larry, what's happening? Bill Falcone, I'm just so excited that we're here. It's just so much fun when we when we do this show. It's just it's just amazing, right? You know, we're here We're here in the Investor Schooling headquarters. We actually have a studio down here. And by the way, if you guys ever want to come by and see the studio, you're welcome to see the studio. If you want to call in today at 855-939-1137, we'd love to talk to you. You, you know, I get lots of calls during the week because we, this show is, is um, simulcast on several stations. So I get calls during the week, and I tell people if they call 855-939-1137 and, and they're not listening to the live show, then they will actually get me. I will actually answer the phone call and, and answer their questions. I get a lot of interesting questions. I get people talking to me about houses they want to sell, like, you know, what they should do when they want to sell it. Not, not necessarily, you know, like sell it to us, but, you know, should they, should they renovate the house before they sell it? Should they do this? Should they do that? Some interesting questions. Then we have people who I talk to, and they say they want to come in, and they want to they, they wanna see what we do, and they want to meet us. You know, we, we've, we've actually become somewhat famous, Phil. Has anyone called up and accused me of being a mafioso shyster? Not this week, but you know when we still haven't heard from that guy yet. I really, you know, no, he's too scared. I'm really looking forward to, to seeing him. What, what what do you have to say to him? I'd have to say he's a weasel. <laughs> Calls up a radio show insulting <coughs> a a fine individual like myself, and why? Because you don't like the sound of my voice. Really. Well, why don't you get your butt to investor schooling, really? and I'll have something to say to you. Yeah, so buck, for, buck, 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 there you buck, go. Buck, buck, buck. And for you guys who don't know what we're talking about, this guy called up and called and said and said this about Phil. He sounds like a mafioso shyster. You know, my, my wife Linda tells us tells me that you know we do this bit way too often. Really, I think you should do it one more time, but this time play Fred's voice on there. Oh, I got I got to find that one. That's a little harder to find. <laughs> You got to give me a second on that one. Fred should be fired for the way he defended me. You, you really? Is that where you want to go with that now? All right, let me see. I yeah. think this is the one. He sounds like a oh, mafioso no, that's the same one. shyster. Sorry, <laughs> I don't have that one easily accessible. Well, Fred also, answered the phone and he said, it. "Investor schooling," and the guy said, "I sound like a mafioso shyster." And Fred said, "Okay." Okay, I know that yeah. was really, just Thanks, really Fred. nice. Yeah, Fred's our way to stand up for me. You're what a buddy. Yeah, Fred is our senior student liaison. So, like, when you become a student, you would have contact with Fred. He would talk to you about wh how to become a student. Also, Jamie. We have some really cool people working here. Now, if you, if you start to meet people, it's kind of a lot of fun. So I was listening to – I don't want to say which show because it really bothers me today. You know, th there's other shows on uh, one of the radio stations that we are on. This one. Uh, and, uh, you know, I started listening to – and they're just – the entire show is a commercial for their place. Now, I get that we're a commercial for our place, too. But we don't just say, come to Investor Schooling, come to Investor Schooling, come to Investor Schooling, come to Investor Schooling, come to... We actually have, we actually have good quality content. And, and I think that's what makes us stand apart from the other shows that are on our station. Uh, so if you have a real question, you could actually call in right now, 855-939-1137, and we would love to talk to you. And if you're listening... Uh, if you're listening if you're listening to us in the car and you're not listening to the Eagles game, we'll be very happy to talk to you because we know that we're much more important than the Eagles game. Because the Eagles game, unless you have money riding on the game, isn't going to make you any money. But we tell you by the end of the day, we're going to give you some stock picks that will definitely make you some money. All right, Phil, I derailed you again. Where are we? 
Why don't we talk about the commercial that we made? And it's running on television right. this week. I'm really glad you brought that up. Because I'm really kind of upset about this. Do you th- have an this. audio of the commercial? I, I, I do have an audio of the commercial. And I'm really, really not happy with this commercial. I have to. I had it a minute ago. And now where'd it go? All right. There it is. Okay. So, uh, so you guys, so th- I'm going to play this. And you guys need to understand that, you know, there's a bunch of shots in here of people like calling us up on the internet and looking us up on TV and walking by a billboard and they all say the same thing. So although you can't see the visual, you're going to see you're going to hear the commercial and here, here here's how it goes. Investor schooling needs a new slogan. Investor schooling. Never heard of. Investor schooling. Never heard of. Investor schooling. Never heard of them. Any suggestions? Phil? Investor schooling. We never heard of you either. Investor schooling. We never heard of you either. Register for a free class at investorschooling.com. Now, I, I got to <laughs> say, Phil, you know, w- w- when we talk about when we talk about this commercial, which is the radio commercial, right? Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Now, I'm, I'm not going to play the whole thing. Well, I will play the whole thing. In Langhorn, this Thursday night at 7 no p.m., head, said? I will no, teach you yeah, how to I'm buy ugly houses oh. and make them okay. beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorn, 215-876-3002, InvestorSchooling.com. Now, look, when, when you hear that, you know, there's a, there's a true call to action. There's, there's um, the mafiosa shyster voice, voice. There's everything you need in a commercial. But wait, I'm going to play it one more time, the other one. Investor schooling needs a new slogan. Investor schooling? Never heard of. Investor schooling? Never heard of. Investor schooling? Never heard of them. Any suggestions? Phil? Investor schooling? We never heard of you either. Investor schooling? We never heard of you either. It is true, Larry. InvestorSchooling.com. We've never heard of them. Is it... (laughs) Is this really what we want? What we want our audience to see that that you know nobody's ever heard of us. Look, you told me that you wanted me to come up with a slogan, and I did that. Okay? I know. And I think the commercial is pretty funny. It, it it is funny. There's no doubt in my mind it's funny. In fact, you know we've I've gotten some you know mixed re- mixed reviews. I've gotten people saying it's hilarious, and then other people going, "How could you put a commercial out like that?" Why? Because I say we never heard of you either? Yeah, because we never heard of you either. Is that really what we what want? If, what if I said it soft like this? Hey, we never heard of you either. Well, I don't so know. Look, how about, how about you know, how about, uh, you know, the real slogan, this is the school you've been waiting for. Yeah, well, that's a slogan. Uh, we have more than one slogan. So now, now our slogan is, we, we never, never heard, heard of you either. either. Yeah, that's a great slogan. I, I kind of like it. It's so funny. Any, so so anybody, <laughs> so anybody out there who who uh, who wants to call in, uh, who wants to call in, you know, look, we we, we want to know what you think of the commercial. Actually, we have one of our students on the line. Hey, Sal, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing? Good, hey, man. Sal, so, what do you think of the commercial? I think I think it was good, but I think you possibly should just um, instead of saying we never heard of you. Say we did hear you, and we've been, you know, making really good money and wise investment choices because we go to the school. You see, that's what I'm trying to say, Phil. Sal gets it. Uh, hang up on Sal. Yeah, like, <laughs> right. I mean, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. But uh, yeah. anyway, yeah. I wanted to say, uh, Larry, that was a great presentation the other night on the taxes. Great. How much money are you going to think you're going to save the- this year? Oh, uh, I should save some. I got to talk to you about some, a few things with the IRA, cool. and I'm going to definitely save Excellent. some money. Excellent. And uh, Phil did a nice presentation the Thursday before on the trust, which I really enjoyed. Yeah. yeah. 
Thank so, you. So, so what, let's get uh, back to the commercial, Sal. So, 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 we, so real quick, let me just tell the audience what we do. So we don't only teach people real estate and stock options trading. We also teach people how to invest in other things, how to make more money with their money, and how to pay less taxes. Were you blown away at how much how much money you could save in your taxes, Sal? When I when I went through some of the yes, you yes, that was there was a lot of stuff that I never even knew about. An accountant will ne- never tell will tell no, you never about tell you. exactly right, right. And wait, no, there's a part two. Wait till I amazing. tell you more. Wait till I tell you the other stuff. Now it's not going to be this week, but wait till I tell you the other stuff, the really really complicated stuff. But I want to get you guys started on the easy stuff. So uh, yeah, anyway, that was, let's that get was back. great. Now we can get back to the commercial, Phil. All right, Phil, let's go get ahead. back to the commercial, yeah. Sal. We got to talk about this. Okay, you know my yeah, favorite I mean, commercials. I... My favorite commercials are like Liberty Mutual. I think their commercials are hilarious. Funny commercials are the ones I remember. All the, if you're gonna just tell me about your business, we're an investor schooling, and we're gonna teach you about real estate and stock option investing. That's boring. You gotta have some humor in it so people remember it. So people uh, give a, a funny slogan is a cool way to separate us from the boring individuals who have no personality and no sense of humor. That is not us. Larry and I have a sense of humor. We like to kid around. You know that. You've been to, uh, you know, so many classes. We have fun. Sure. We make fun of each other. We're having a good time. So why would the commercial be any different? The commercial is going to be cutting edge, same kind of stuff that we do in the class. I gotta be me. <laughs> I gotta be me. Yeah, right. Whatever exactly. I'll be will be me. Wow, I didn't know you could sing. Yeah, I didn't know I could yeah. either, but uh, that I can hit those notes. You, 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 you really are a mafioso chaser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like he was trying to be Sinatra right there. He must be definitely a Sinatra good. fan. Well, That's he's one of my mafioso peeps, chaser. you know. He, yeah. he is the... Second most, uh, a first most famous Italian American. I'm working to be the second one. <laughs> I, I thought you were the first, and he was the second. No, yeah. I'm not the first. All right, I, Sal. I, <laughs> all right, I got a question for you, Sal. How much money did you make since yeah. you've been with investor schooling? Uh, forty-eight thousand. Stock options. You. you made forty-eight thousand dollars in stock options. I didn't even know that. Yes, <laughs> that's pretty yes. impressive. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Really? Right now I'm down. Right now I'm down a little bit, but with the stuff that I sold, when you look at cost bases, yeah, yes, forty-eight thousand. So, so you took profits of forty-eight thousand. Yeah. yeah, right. That's yeah. That's exactly yes, the way we, exactly, we market. Yes. Right. The money you took, you took, the, you sold the stock option, and you made money. That was forty-eight thousand. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. Yes. I love it, man. Yes. Are Are you happy you yeah. joined the school? Yes, I'm very happy, and I would recommend it for anybody. <laughs> he's got, got forty eight thousand reasons. To be yeah, no, happy. really. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would highly recommend it. I'm just still. Um, yeah, I, I just joined the banner thing with the banner sure. uh, yeah. for advertising. Yeah. Sure. And um, that's going to be work. I got all the letters uh, downloaded. Very I got to get you my three hundred list. So you know, I'm ready to get, jump into the real estate. I mean, I already own real estate, but I'm looking to you know look for houses the right way, the way you teach it, which is excellent. Excellent, man. We love it. Thanks so much, man. Yeah, All right. You just All right. you haven't even scratched the surface I know, of what really. you can do, just wait. what you're capable of doing. Just wait. All right. So anybody else out there want to call in? 855-939-1137. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are about our commercial, about uh, about <laughs> how we can help you make more money. I, I, I got to tell you, Phil, like, I did not know he made that much money. That's pretty impressive. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, it's good. We should, uh, we we, should yeah, uh, investigate. We definitely. Some more and have him tell us a little bit more about uh, yeah. what picks he did that on and stuff. Yeah, on that's Monday pretty awesome. Night. We'll talk pretty about awesome. It. Cool. So uh, why don't we hit another topic while we're at All it? All right. What, what's the other topic? So one one of the topics I wrote was, you know, these last few weeks, you and I had some pretty incredible personal success. Yeah, man. Right? And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, that might be hard to duplicate on a regular basis. It is hard to duplicate on a regular basis, but that's okay. You know, you know, you made, uh, what would you make this week? 128000 one hundred and twenty-seven thousand nine hundred dollars. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I was rounding off. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So you made one hundred and twenty-eight thousand. I made one hundred ninety-three thousand. You made it in real estate. I made it in the stock market, which is pretty au- pretty awesome. And by the way, just so you understand, when we're saying these guys, I want you to know that this is money we took. This is profit we took out of the account. So that's the the reality. And it wasn't. And it was a very small account that we started with. Not a small small account, but um, but a small enough account that. 
that's a really good return. Yeah. So we don't have to make that kind of money all the time, Phil. We're not going to make that money all the time. In fact, if we only make that kind of money once a year and don't make any other money ever, we're making twice what the average person makes. Yeah, I'm aware. It just it, it feels tremendous, uh, you know, what what a great couple of weeks we had. And uh, it's, it's uh, unusual that we both did it within – Six yeah, weeks, days yeah. of each yeah, other. Yeah, exactly. Right, right, right. Absolutely. But um, and and Larry does. You know, he was doing a stock option thing for an account that he manages. I was doing a real estate deal. It just so happened to happen at the same time. Yeah. And um, it sure feels great. And you know, our students know all this because whenever I do a big real estate deal, I always come in and talk about it. Sometimes I make five grand off a deal. Sometimes I make fifteen. Sometimes I make a hundred and you know twenty seven thousand dollars. So you never really know what's going to happen in this business, but great deals come along. And uh, I see in my future some other big deals because that's really what I'm focusing on. I'm getting getting back into the commercial arena and sticking to it. Yeah, and, and, and I'll also tell you that, look, we got some middle deals going on. You know, you got a little deal that you're making, a, what, about say 40000 on or something? I yeah, think it was. you know, little deals are great at it. I had a, a client who uh, – Lives in East Norton, lived in East Norton, and um, he basically sold me his house subject to, meaning I'm going to make the payments on his house. And uh, so I put his house up for sale, and I put his house up for rent. Well, it was your house now. Well, of course, it's yeah. my house, yeah. yeah. So I put, his, I put the house up for sale, and I put the house up for rent. I got a ton of calls for rentals, but I like my chunky money. What's chunky money? Um, any check that has uh, at least five figures in it. Okay, so minimum of ten thousand dollars to me is chunky money. I love to get chunky money checks. Um, so I was tempted to just sell the property and get the chunky money. And I had an agent who had revealed to me that her clients were selling a house on December eighteenth, and they absolutely had to buy this house so they'd have a place to live. Uh, may not have been the greatest decision to reveal that, but. Regardless, I uh, I got them to pay full price for the house at two ninety nine, uh, which should put me in a position to make about thirty five forty thousand dollars. That's not bad, I got to tell you. And I'm buying two houses at the end of this. At the, actually, in the middle of December, I'm buying two houses. They were both supposed to be subject to. I decided not to do one subject to. I decided to borrow some money from somebody instead on the second one because I, the, you know. So when you're doing a subject to deal, you're taking over somebody's mortgage and mortgage payments, which is actually a really great idea. But you kind of have you kind of connected to these people for a long time, and usually it's an objection on their side that hey, you know, I'm going to be connected to you for a long time. And like, well, hey, you know, you got two choices here. You could you could go to closing and lose a whole lot of money, or I could buy your house subject to, and it could cost you nothing. These are usually for people who are who are underneath uh, underwater, and that's we usually come rescue them. But this guy. It's just a little strange, and because it's a little strange, I felt it might be difficult for me to do, uh, you know, to do something, you know, to it could it could backfire on me in the future. So I just borrowed money and bought the house. I'm going to buy the house outright and give well, them. I'm the surprised you the did that price. because you could have always, if there were problems in the future. Mo first of all, most right. people when they rent a property to somebody or or they do a, a deal where you're connected to the seller, like a subject to deal. Most people are very nervous in the beginning, including myself. But once mm -hmm. you see the payments start to come in from sure. the renter or once the seller sees the, the payments are getting made by you, a certain level of uh, comfort will, will come. Sure, absolutely. It doesn't, but it's yeah. not always there at settlement. Not, but I understand what you're thinking. But you could have always done that. You could have always replaced the financing yeah, down the road. Yeah, I could You're right. You're right. You're right. It, was just, it was just a little weird. But the other one is, you know, it, the guy. it's a standard. Obvi it's the same kind of subject to deal that we go out and we rescue somebody. The house is probably worth in the range of 250000 He owes 265000 And, uh, you know, he just doesn't want it anymore. He can't get rid of it. Doesn't want to go to closing with money. Doesn't know what to do. I approached him with this concept. He's like, really? You can do that? You can take over my payments? I don't have to pay anything? I said, Yes. And he's like, oh, great. And I'm pretty excited about it. There's a tenant in there. They pay they pay really good rent. And there's some other backstory in there, but that's okay. And I o only thing that I had to do is I had to promise the tenant first right of refusal if I go to sell the property in the next three years at a fixed price because that was something he promised him a while ago. 
but there's, and but honestly, I, even if that happens, it's fine. I still make I still make a nice chunk a check of chunky money. It's just that I got I'm gonna keep that promise, and that's all. So if it happens in three years, I only make somewhere near fifty or sixty thousand. If it happens uh, later, I could make. You gotta money. have like a, a baby crying or something. I know, right? Exactly. Right, right <laughs> wah, wah, right. wah. <laughs> no, it's like it's like a, you know, Only fifty no. or sixty thousand. Let me teach you how to you do it. You poor baby. It's not like that. <laughs> that's how you do it. Well, that's like a baby screaming. I'm oh, doing a baby. My baby's just crying. Oh, your baby's just crying. Okay, great. So yeah. if you guys have any questions, feel free to call us 855-939-1137. 855-939-1137. Look, you may have some questions about some other things. Maybe the wholesale, the new wholesale law yeah. in Philadelphia. If you want to talk about that. I'd be more than happy to talk about it. So if you're a wholesaler and you're listening to this going, what am I going to do now? This is a new wholesale law. We'll probably ha- dedicate a show to that in the next couple of weeks or two. But if you want to call and ask us, it's great. If you want to ask us about stock options, call and ask. If you want to ask us about anything, you can do that. And, That's of course, right. you can go to InvestorSchooling.com and sign up for a class this Thursday. So uh, what, what we're going to do is we're going to go to commercial break. But when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about can creative financing make a standard deal into an amazingly profitable deal? So I want you to stick around and come back and learn a little bit about this. Because if you don't know what creative financing is, you better be on the air listening to us when we come back in two and a half minutes. All right, all right. What's happening, everybody out there in radio land and Facebook land, too? Hey, if you're on Facebook, hey, hit us up. Send a like. Send a, send a like. Send a heart. Say something on Facebook. If you feel like asking a question on Facebook, feel free to do that. If you want to call us, please call us. You can call us right now at 855 855- 939-1137, ask your questions about real estate, about stock market, about saving money in taxes, about making more money, or about how two crazy normal guys can just have a radio show, and we can tell you how you can do that, too. Anyway, 855-939-1137. Where were we, Phil? All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about can creative financing make a standard deal amazingly profitable? Amazingly. You think that's too strong of a word? No, I think it's an awesome word. Okay. What do you think? I think yes. <laughs> I don't want to give you a run-on sentence. I'm just going to say yes. Well, you know, you you are uh, famous for doing run-on sentences, by the way. <laughs> but I got you a box of periods for uh, for Christmas, so you'll you got be me a, a box of Cheerios. Periods, so you can oh, put period. them in to stop your oh, run-on okay. sentences. All right. All right. You know so what? We got another student on the line. Isn't this great? We got another yeah, student sure. on the line. Put him through. Let's bring Wendy on. Hey, Wendy, hey. what's going on? Hey, Larry. Hey, Phil. How are you guys doing? What's happening? By the way, I just want everybody to know that these are like unsolicited calls. These are just people listening. They're our students, and they just love us so much that they can't get enough of us, so they call us on <laughs> Sunday. Isn't that true? <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's true. Um, I just <laughs> tuned in, so I don't know if you already covered this. But um, we were at your class Thursday night about taxes. It was awesome. Uh, a lot of great information. And uh, there was so much to take in. I don't know if I heard this correctly, so I just wanted to clarify it with you. Sure. Um, I think you said something about moving money from an IRA into a Roth. Um, yeah. I think it's like six. I know you yeah. talked about the 401K as well, but mm-hmm. was am I right about – you could move it from an IRA to a Roth and somehow not pay tax on that. Okay, it, it's a fine line. Though. So, so, so here, here's what here, here's what. So, you, so okay. Let me just take it back to the beginning. So, anytime you have a IRA, you can move that money to a Roth IRA, no problem. But if you've already taken the tax deduction on the IRA, so let's say you put in six thousand dollars into an IRA in 2019 and you claimed it on your taxes already. You that's a tax that's that was tax deductible money, uh, you know, money pre tax money you didn't pay taxes on it. So if you move that six thousand dollars to your Roth IRA now, you now have to pay taxes on the six thousand dollars plus any any uh, additional money you made. So let's say if, let's say you know if you made some money on it, let's say you made twelve percent seventy two hundred not so you made some money on it and you uh, you know you made five hundred dollars on it, you got to pay taxes on the five hundred dollars too. And then it's in the Roth IRA, and when it's in the Roth IRA, everything from there is tax deductible. Where I think you're trying to uh, to relate to was uh, what's called, what, what they call a backdoor IRA. And basically, the income if you have to make too much income, it's 140 thousand for a single person and 210 thousand for a married person. If you make too much money, they won't allow you to contribute to a Roth IRA. 
So there's a really simple way to do that, which mm-hmm. is you you move the money into a regular IRA. So in my case, I'm over 50, so I can put $7,000 in. I move the $7,000 into a regular IRA, and literally the next day, I move it over into a Roth IRA because you can move money from your IRA anytime into a Roth IRA. And remember, I have not yet taken the tax deduction on the IRA, and I also haven't made any money on the IRA yet because I moved it in one day. Now, if if I if I put the seven thousand dollars in, made one trade, made one stock option trade, and I and I uh, turned that IRA into ten thousand dollars in one day, and then moved it to the Roth IRA, the three thousand dollars would probably be taxable. I'm not sure if the whole ten would, but I know the three thousand would. So that's what that's where I was. Is that it? Would, did that answer your question? Is that I'm sorry. Um, I think it did. I cool. understand the first part about. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> All right, cool. So, so you weren't listening to us earlier, were you? Um, I just tuned in a few minutes ago. What did I miss? Oh, that's okay. So I'm. I, I want to play. Have you seen? Have you seen our TV commercial yet? I don't think so. All right, I'm going to play the audio portion for the TV commercial. And, you know, we had this whole argument about this TV commercial a little while ago. And I want, I, I know you're only going to hear the audio portion, and I'll play, play the video portion, but you can listen to the audio for a second. Okay. Investor schooling needs a new slogan. Investor schooling? Oh. Never heard of it. Investor schooling? Never heard of it. Investor schooling? Never heard of them. Any suggestions, Phil? Investor schooling. We never heard of you either. Investor schooling. We never heard of you either. <laughs> Register for a free class at investorschooling.com. <laughs> well, she laughed. That's cool. That's good to know. She, she laughed. Uh, I love it. All right, cool. So she likes it. I don't know, Phil. Maybe you were right. Maybe it was a good commercial. Larry's worried about the commercial. <laughs> he thinks that some snowflakes oh, no, out there worry. are going to be offended by it. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> she's cracking up. <laughs> you know, I always wanted to use that name. I tried to start a rock band once called We Never Heard of You Either to try to beat them to the punch. <laughs> People walk into a nightclub and they go, who's playing tonight? The Jones Brothers? Never heard of them, right? So I wanted to beat them to the punch yeah. and say, I never heard of your ass either. I thought it was the day we met when I walked into the room and you said, hey, I know you. You're Larry Steinhouse. And I looked at you and I don't know you. Yeah, I didn't know who you were when you contacted me. You did, too. I said I did. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah, know yeah, who you yeah, were. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he knew who I was, but I didn't know who you was. Yeah. Anyway, so, hey, Wendy, we thank you. So, hey, by the way, quick, Wendy, did you make any money so far with Investor Schooling? You're a newer student. Did you make any money? Um, I'm brand new. I, I haven't made any, but I haven't lost any. So. Well, that's a good thing. Um, you know, we yeah, don't want our students losing money. That thing. would be a bad thing. That so you're, like, uh, you're here but for I'm about a month now, right? Um, yeah, I'm definitely headed in the right direction. Cool. So what, what, can you, what can you tell our audience? Should they join Investor Schooling? Oh, definitely. You're going to get so much information. Your, your head will explode. <laughs> cool. And entertainment, too. And who's that in the background? That's my husband, Glenn. He's yeah, he's the backseat What's driver. He's too, shy, he's, he's too shy to get on the radio. What's up, Glenn? <laughs> hey, you doing, Phil? Hey, you doing, Larry? What's happening, I'm enjoying man? Everything, everything we're getting involved with with you guys. It's, right. it's been a blast so far. That's, That's cool. cool. We you, love it. You, we haven't, we haven't even scratched the surface yet. Yeah. In two years. Uh, you know, you're gonna you're gonna be a completely changed person, looking at things in a in a different way, and seeing opportunities that were go. probably right in front of your face that you didn't necessarily realize, like creative yeah, financing exactly. that I mean, we were talking about. Yeah, we're about to talk about that yeah. now. Hey, all right, you can go back and watch the Eagles hey. game now. Thanks for checking in. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a good one. <laughs> Take yeah. care. All right, where were we, Phil? Why, why don't you explain how – I'm sure you know, you've know you done enough creative financing deals. Why don't you explain how a, a creative strategy incorporated into the real estate purchase can make it so much better? Why don't you explain that to somebody? So there are so many different ways to, 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 to acquire properties with, you know, quote, unquote, creative financing. I don't even know where to begin. 
Uh, maybe I'll start with the building that we're sitting in right now. How's that one? Perfect. That's a great yeah. one. Yeah, it's a good one. So, so the building that we're in right now, it's actually an office condo. So we have an office condo, and it and you know these condos are probably worth I don't know, they're probably worth between three hundred and three hundred fifty thousand. Uh, you know, uh, you know, in a good market, right? So what happened was there was a gentleman who was selling this office condo. He was done with it. It wasn't rented. He owed nothing on it. He, he bought it for a business that he had many, many years ago. Matter of fact, when the condo when the condo was built, he was the first person to buy it. So he bought it from the beginning. He had it laid out the way he had it laid out, and he he couldn't sell it. He was having trouble selling it. It was right at the end of the hard time in you know 2016, 15, whatever it was. I can't remember the exact year. So it was still a little tough. Real estate market was still a little tough. And I reached out to him, and I said, hey, you know, by the way, it was a mailer. So I, I was mailing some people, and he happened to be one of the people I mailed. And I reached out to him. He called me. He said, hey, what can you do? I, I came and saw him, and I, we started to talk about it. And I said, look, you know, let me ask you a question. You know, I, and I don't want to get too involved because some people may know who he is. But, you know, you know the, the concept was basically what are you going to do with the money? And he goes, look, I'm probably going to just annuitize it anyway. And I said, well, let me be your annuity. And that's basically what happened. I, you know, I pay him a fixed amount every month. And by the way, you know, I gave him a certain amount of money for the property. Uh, and I give him a fixed amount every month. And I don't have to worry about interest because he, doesn't, he, he didn't take interest. He took it, he took it, he took it interest-free. And the reason he did that was because he needed to sell it. He wanted to get, he wanted to get away from it. He doesn't have any taxes on, on it anymore. And meanwhile, he gets a check every month for the amount uh, that we agreed to. And it's an awesome deal for me, awesome deal for him. Now, here's the funny part. At the time, I actually bought the building to rent it, and I couldn't rent it. <laughs> that was the crazy part. I struggled renting it. I remember it. that. Yeah, I struggled renting it for a year and a half. I had it up for rent. And finally, I said, look, you know, and this is how basically – it's funny because this is how – one of the one of the ways investor schooling got started was I had this building. I was coaching people on real estate and stock options, and I was basically coaching them at, at my favorite uh, coffee shop, Dunkin' Donuts. And I finally said, look, I got this building. Why don't I just start coaching people here? And then Phil and I talked about it because Phil and I had been friends for many years. We had, we had been in some other business ventures together. And I said, hey, Phil, why don't, we, why don't we start teaching people real estate? And at the time, it was just real estate. It wasn't stock options, but it turned into stock options, I think, in two weeks later. No, I was, you, you were doing stock options. I was doing stock options myself, right. Yeah, right, right. You right. were doing That's it. That's true, yeah. You were coaching people in, yeah. s in, in stock options. So you yeah. were doing it. Yeah, yeah right. And we created we created investor schooling and and uh, actually Phil came up with the name which I thought was a fantastic name, and and we created this business and I, I tell you what we are killing it we love it and the reason we're killing it is not it, it's not and I gotta be honest with you both Phil and I don't need to come here we don't need the money we don't I mean it's nice to get the money don't get me wrong but we don't need the money in fact I have often said that I would make more money if I didn't pay attention to the school the way I pay attention to it because I have more time to do other investments that I would make more money with. However, I, and however, you know, we really enjoy the students. You heard two students just now call in randomly. We, you know, we didn't know they were going to call in and tell us about how excited they are about the school. And that's really why we're here. That's what makes us excited. That's what makes us happy. So is that a good creative financing deal? Or you want another one? No, that's good. You want to throw out another one or? So the interesting thing, remember I said before the commercial break, that I was going to take that property subject to, and I decided not to. That property, I'm buying that property for sixty-eight thousand, mm -hmm. but I'm borrowing a hundred thousand because the property will be worth one hundred and thirty thousand when I'm done with it. So the the person who's lending the money to me has no problem lending to me because he knows he knows who we are first of all because he trusts me. But on top of that, he also knows what the property's worth, and he also knows that I'm getting it at a really really good price. So even though I'm not taking it over subject to, I'm actually going to closing table with no money. I've put no money down so far. I haven't even taken a dollar out of my pocket yet. And when I leave the closing, I leave the closing with something near $25,000 in my pocket. So, so you got paid $25,000 to buy To buy a house. house, exactly. Now, are you planning on fixing it up? Yeah, I'm going to put a little bit of money into it. I'll probably put probably 15 of that 25000 in. And then I'll probably rent it. And so far, I think I make around three to $400 a month rent. So I walk away with you know $10,000 and $300 a month. That's what I used to call wholesale to yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So sometimes you find a real estate deal, okay, so if you understand the concept of wholesaling, you get a deal under contract, you sell it to somebody else, you get paid ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, sell it to a flipper who actually ends up going in and flipping it. And sometimes 
if you really like the property, if it's geographically close to you, if it's in a pocket that you'd really be proud to own a house in and easy for you to take care of from a landlord standpoint, you might want to consider wholesaling to yourself, which all that really means is instead of selling this building to somebody else and letting them make all the money, you buy the house, you get a private investor to put up some money, at, just like Larry said, put up more than you need so you can put a little few bucks in your pocket. You're still getting paid. You're just getting paid with money that's owed back to somebody else. And you, you wholesale the property to yourself, something that I've done a number of times when the property is just too good to let it go. Extremely profitable idea. And I love it. It's a great. It's such a great way to to make money, and you make you make chunky money fast too. Yeah, you know the uh, the one that I'm <coughs> doing in East Norriton that I've taken over subject to. Mm -hmm. You know what what made me change my mind was a few factors that had to do with me and a business partner who owned it, and I thought it might be better just to take the profit now. Uh, and so, the whole concept of Listing it for for rent and for sale at the same time allowed me to field a bunch of offers, right? And I pretty much ignored the people who wanted to rent it, but by the quantity of emails that I was getting, I learned a couple of things, like I could rent this thing no problem at all. So that's all I really wanted to know is can I rent this thing for $2,400 a month, which is what I was going to rent it for, can I rent it for $2,400 a month easily? And I absolutely answered my own question just by having people shoot me emails yeah, sure. saying, I'm interested, I'm interested, I'm interested. Sure. Every day, three, four people, qualified people with real jobs, making real yep. money with good credit scores. And But I ultimately decided just to sell it, and especially because I got a premium price for it. The price that I told you I listed it for is, is the price that I got. I got the full listing price. Right. Uh, and whether or not I'm surprised you didn't get over. What? I'm surprised you didn't get over listing. Well, the the highest comp was about twenty lower. Wow, that's right. amazing. Okay, right. So okay. it could be a, an issue with appraisals. We'll see. We'll have to see. Yeah, sure. And if there is, maybe it'll become a rental again. Yeah, right. I mean, exactly. it doesn't you matter. Got no, to yeah, me. you got nothing to lose, right? Right, right. I have nothing to lose. It's one of these deals where you, you can't lose. Okay. I love using – having a real estate license, one of the greatest things about it is your ability to market this property or any property you have in your possession to 30-some thousand real estate agents in the Delaware Valley. And you can use the feedback that you get from those agents and the interest that you can gauge from those agents will tell you everything you need to know about the house. And, you know, I'm an investor, so I'm not – selling other people's properties. If you see anything on the MLS under my name, it's generally a property that I have an interest in. And what better way to test it than to throw it up for sale and see what you think. And if people are going nuts, ready to give you over asking price, maybe it's time to pull it down and bump the price for it. Yeah, again. absolutely. You right? know, the same thing with rentals. Rentals are going insane right now too. It's, it's, it's a really good time to have assets yeah. to sell. You know, the $15 an hour minimum wage, are you a pro proponent or, or, or against it? I'm kind of on both sides of the fence on that issue right. because, you know, $15 an hour is not a lot of money, and I want my right. fellow Americans to make at least that much. Sure. But I also understand from a business owner standpoint what a neg negative thing it is if you're going to force a businessman to pay those kind of figures. Now he's got to lay people off. So it does the exact opposite sometimes. In yeah. some cases yeah. – it ends up hurting the poor more than helping them. So my thought on the fifteen dollar an hour thing, you know, look, you know, it's <laughs> don't, don't it, it it actually bumps rents up, and it bumps property values up because if people are making more money, then they're paying more money for for rent, and it, and that's just the way it's going to be. So don't let that you know don't don't let that bother you. Fifteen dollars an hour doesn't help the people with the fifteen dollar an hour because all everything raises up in price. The only thing that it helps everyone else. So I like it. Well, as a landlord with many people paying me rent, uh, I'm all for the rents going up. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yes, I'm a capitalist. I'm sorry. Are you a capitalist? Yes. I did not know that. With a capital C. 
with a, with a capital C. Say, hey, if you have any questions, you can call us in at 855-939-1137. Hey, if you're another student, you want to give us another praise, that's great. 855-939-1137. Feel free to call in. Or if you're not a student and you want to just find out more about us or ask us any questions about real estate, about creative financing deal, or anything else that you want to talk about, we are here. You heard Wendy talk about the fact that we talked about saving money on taxes the other day. And we, by the way, that started, if you remember, that started last week in our show. Because so, did, did somebody call and ask a question, or did we just start talking about it? No, you actually started telling me about it. You were giving me personal advice about right, the uh, IRA, the IRA right. that we have set up. And, and I said, you should probably do a, a presentation on this. Correct. That's and, exactly and, right. And, and don't, don't take that for granted, because Larry had to do a lot of research and make a few phone calls and he had to confirm a lot of things, so his presentation was accurate. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Take it from a guy who writes new presentations all the time for the school. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it's it hard was, work. And that one was a two-hour presentation. That's unusual. Usually I do yeah. a presentation, you do a presentation. But there was so much information that, I did it, that it took me two hours to present it. And I've got a part two that I'm not going to do for a while. Yeah, but about so all, yeah, all, all kinds of crazy other things you can do, like, uh, like charitable trusts and... And, uh, you know, in fair market value exchanges, it's crazy the things you can do to save money in your taxes when you're making a lot of money. And we want everyone who comes to investor schooling to make a lot of money. That's why we teach people how to make a lot of money. So I got an idea. Why don't we do this? Why don't we go to one more commercial break? And sure. when we come back, let's spend some time talking about the stock market in the upcoming week and some of the picks that you have because uh, – we should do it. We we didn't get it in on Thursday night. I'd like to get it in today. Sounds like a can. plan, man. All right, commercial break. <laughs> all right, all right. Welcome back. Welcome back to Investor Schooling Live. That's right. We are a live show. You can call us at 855-939-1137. And we're about to talk about stock options. But before we do, we have somebody on the line who wants to talk a little bit about a property she has. Lily Dory, what's going on? How can we help you? Yes, I had a property at 350 don't give, East don't give, the don't give the address, please. Don't give the address. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. I had a property, and then I took sick and had to have a laparoscopic surgery. And, okay. oh, boy, I went through it. And I gave back the property to the mortgage company to do what they want to do with it. They wrote me oh and boy. tell me they, they're going to sell it in 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 Sherrod's sale. Okay. And they told me the property worth, on, on conversation that we had, that the property worth 50000 And I found out mid-summer that they sold the property for 69000 plus, And nobody get in touch with me. Nobody what? said nothing to me. How much money did you owe? I think it was sixty six something. Okay. So they didn't they didn't recover anything more than what they sold it for. And the, the only reason I asked. So what what is exactly your question then? Are are, are you do you think that they treated you unfairly? Uh, I don't think it you see the thing is I reach at a point, my dear, that I'm not going in the grave with anything, so I just walk away from it. But contact me and let me remove my things from the property. Oh, 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 okay. That's all. Oh, I see, I see. You weren't living at the property in the property when it happened, huh? No, no, I live in a different one. You see, I worked 27 okay. years caring for old people, and when Got they it. say God bless you, God really bless you, but then you took sick. You can't have no choice over that. Yeah, well, I'm, yes, I'm my really dear. sorry that, that it happened that way. Yeah, that's that's just sad that way that it happened that yeah, way. Yeah, but, but yeah, they, they, they don't are have not to tell discouraging you. me. Yeah, yeah. they are they, not they, going know. to discourage me. Yeah, was I am it, seventy-six there, years old, and I'm not going to be discouraged. So, was there anything that was extremely valuable to you in that property? Every little thing is valuable to a woman. <laughs> uh, uh, understood, sorry. understood. But but was there any one particular thing that <laughs> was right. of value? Uh, I have a, a, a $60, six, $60 blower that I had there with a lovely card. I, I, they didn't even let me take out nothing. I, I just don't worry. Wait, what, what was it? I just say how things are. So a blower, a, a blower that can suck up leaf and blow leaf. 
Oh, okay. But you don't need that now, though, do yeah, you? Yeah. When you're living, do you? Huh? Do you need, need that yeah, now when you're living? Yeah, I need it. You do? Yeah, I, I so, need it because I usually take it, clean up the whole block, blow up the trash and let me take it up quite easy when you blow up your you suck it up. Right, but right, right. So, so this was the blower cover, or the... With okay, this so COVID, it's like, all right, I'll, I'll tell you what. I, 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 we're going to do something for you. Um, John's going to get you on the line, and he's going to get your address, and we're going to send you a blower sucker thing that you could uh, that you could have. It's going to be on us on Investor Schooling. We're going to send it to you, okay? Okay. All right. So, But I thank you for the call. Okay. Hey, John, get that information from her, and we're going to get back to our show. God and bless. We really appreciate you calling in, Lily. That was awesome. All right, Phil, you ready for some good stock picks? Yeah, let's get on with it. All right, so here we go. So we had some really good things going on this week, of course. And as always, the stock market is in severe turmoil right now. And I, I'm kind of like uh, ugh, waiting for some interesting things to happen. First of all, Facebook, we were talking about this earlier. I think Facebook is a play at 265. Wait for another five points. And I buy a call on Facebook. If it goes down to 265, I play that back up again to 279. Which I blew it. I'm so upset that I blew it. My alert went off, and I forgot. I, I just didn't see it, and I didn't sell it in time. And sure enough, so now I'm now I, I wish I did, but that happens. You're going to make mistakes. I also, if it goes down below two, if it goes to 255 after that, I'd buy more. And anything below 250, I'd buy more and play that past earnings, and you'll be fine. I have an interesting one for you that you have that we haven't talked about, which is Nikola. So I've been watching Nikola for a long time now. Now Nikola is that the uh, some people call it a competitor to Tesla, which is nowhere near a competitor to Tesla. But the nice, th nice thing about Nikola, and, and the symbol for Nikola is NKLA, and the nice thing about Nikola was that the was that they partnered with GM, and the stock took off, and blah blah blah, and then it dropped, and blah blah blah, and all this crazy stuff. And the CEO was accused of fraud. I don't care; it doesn't matter. When I look at the chart, though, for Nikola, I tell you what, it literally just broke out. Now. Usually we play, and it's funny because Phil and I had this whole conversation at dinner the other night. Usually we play charts before they break out, and I was watching it. I was hoping it would go down a little bit lower, and it didn't. I was looking for 18. It's at 26 now, and at 19, which I was looking for 18. Of course, 19 it happened. It went down to 19, and it shot right back up. But this is a play. I just want to wait for 22. If we could get lucky and pull in 22, I'd be really happy, but I have a feeling this stock is going to take off into the 30s and 40s shortly. So just keep an eye on it. That may be a play, but I would play it a little bit long term. I'd also be really careful with it because it's a dangerous stock. It's got a lot of controversy around it. <coughs> so that, that would be another one that I like. Apple is Are one of sure my favorites. Are you sure you're pronouncing it correctly? Nikola? Yeah. N-I-K-O-L-A? Because I thought it was supposed to be, okay, so Ni Nikola Tesla's Correct. last name, right? So right. talk about like they, uh, Elon Musk took the last name, so right. and these guys took the first name exactly, right? The first name, right? Nikola, right? Yeah, so that, that's exactly right. So NKLA is is the symbol. I, I, you know, it's a Chinese company though, so that's is it? yeah, that's one of the things you got you got you got to kind. Oh, that's just, oh wait, oh no, I'm sorry, that's, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of Neo. That's not, I'm thinking of Neo. That's not Nikola. Nik 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 Nikola is not no. I'm thinking of Neo. But the but it's a uh, it's interesting because again, I think this stock has room to grow. There's no doubt, plus especially with the partnership with GM. I just saw an article in GM that GM really wants to make a push for electric cars, and this is going to be part of their partnership. I wouldn't be surprised if this disappears and it becomes GM, you know what I mean? Where they g they make a buyout price and they just get rid of the whole company and buy it out. Right. Well, that's uh, that's one of my concerns. So Well, that could be a good thing, though, because if they offer the right amount of money, then you know you're, the stock will take off. They offer 40 50 bucks 50 a share and today. And so for example— if it's a 26 today and tomorrow GM says we just offered everybody $50 a share, that would be fantastic. Right. Well, if G if uh, GM were to buy them, yeah, it would be fantastic for the stock. But if GM were to kick them to the curb, it would do the opposite. Well, of course, and of course, and that's where you got that's where the risk is. But I don't think GM would want to kick them to the curb. I think that's going to be a good play. All right, getting back to uh, getting back to COVID COVID plays. I still think now Royal Caribbean is you know I I said last week by. A by a put at 75, it hits 75. I bought a put the next day, and I'm waiting for it to play out. And I, I like it. I think it's a put play, but I don't think it's a put play for long. Like you know, 
you know, we, we saw Royal Caribbean hit 20, 25, I think it was, in this, you know, in the early spring when, when the nightmare all hit. And it's not going to do that again. We're not going to have that problem again. I mean, cruises are going to start up again. The real question is whether cruises are going to start up with masks or not masks. That's really going to be the, the, the question and when they're going to start up. I've been getting advertisements from Royal Caribbean because I, I cruise Royal Caribbean all the time. And I've been getting advertisements from Royal Caribbean and the advertisements start in April. So there's no doubt in my mind that they think they're going to be cruising in April. And I don't think they're going to stop at this point. I think they're going to say, too bad. We're cruising, even if it's into the ocean and back, they're going to be cruising. So I think that's what's going to happen. And that stock's going to eventually go back up. Now, that stock was $130, $140 stock before this all happened. I don't think it's going to hit there right away, but over 100 in the future. But before it does that, we're going to see 60 and 65 again. So, so it's a put play, 60, 65. If it falls below 60, it becomes a call. Ride it up and down. That, that's been a clear pattern. Clear pattern. Beautifully clear, clear pattern. All right. You got an opinion about Airbnb? Because we have Deborah Ann on Facebook who's asking. It's about to go to, uh, you know, it's going to be an IPO soon. And uh, she wants to know what you think of that. All right. So anything that's an IPO, I stay away from it. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, IPO is a stock is different than a stock option. But I will tell you, even as a stock, the problem with the problem with stocks, uh, with you know, with IPOs, is they jump. So whatever they open up at, they <laughs> jump, and they jump really fast. You're not going to get the jump. You're going to buy it at the high price, not the low price. It's just impossible. You're not, you're not on the list, is basically the way I put it. And then the stock's going to drop, and then it's going to and then it's going to drop again, and then it may start to to find a range. But as a stock option play, I don't want to touch anything that doesn't show me some history before it launches. So it's well not I got to tell you, as a, as a guy who owns a vacation rental business, I like Airbnb the least. Oh, that's funny. They are yeah. very difficult to work yeah. with. The landlord is always the crumb, and the tenants are always the wonderful people. They refund your money to the tenants without any uh, conversation with you. I, I much rather prefer VRBO over Airbnb or uh, TripAdvisor or Booking.com. So I do not like Airbnb at all. I've had numerous issues with them. They, um, you know, when a, a, a tenant calls up and says that their family member died and they can't come on vacation, even though they booked the thing six months ago and paid for it 100%, uh, I've had problems like that where they just refund the money back to the tenant without having any discussions with me about it. It's yeah, that's not good. No, and it's really... Uh, you know, what most of the time it is, is maybe the weather is not perfect, so they bail. So I think we're actually out of time. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think we're, we're running out. So if you guys want to attend a class, go to InvestorSchooling.com, and you can attend a class. We will see you next week. Thanks, John. We appreciate you as a <coughs> place, as a, uh, what did he do? He was the producer, right? He's the producer. And he's the cool guy. Anyway, take care, everybody. We'll see you next week.